Demetrius Andre press conference with David Benavidez will be coming up soon. Um, today's the day they're going to announce the fight for November. A lot of fans over the years, a lot of bloggers, a lot of professionals, a lot of uh, Hall of Famers, a lot of trainers, a lot of promoters. Over the years, a lot of uh, journalists, a lot of past fighters, a lot of YouTubers, especially YouTubers, bloggers, uh, Twitter fans, boxing fans. A lot of these guys have uh, talked about Demetrius Andre like he's not a threat all these years. And lately, I've been hearing a lot of silence. Not many people are mentioning his name in a derogatory way like they were doing, talking down on him like they were. Now you see a lot of guys, they trying to use his headlines as far as now his quotes. They trying to use his quotes for uh, big stories, talking about, oh, Crawford don't want to come to 168 because of Demetri Andre. Now he a threat. Now y'all trying to use Demetri Andre as some kind of roadblock for Terrence Crawford. I see the little tactics going on, the little weird stuff going on, and it just exposes everybody. I can't wait until I hear the first person sit up here and say, well, yeah, you know, Demetrius Andre, I know you wasn't uh, a fan of his. And that they're going to try to downplay either if he wins, they're going to try to downplay his win by saying, oh, ben Benavidez wasn't like we thought he was. And that's going to be a complete lie. But they're going to try to downplay anything around it, like even the fight. A lot of people trying to, oh, yeah, yeah, they fighting and all that stuff. But it's going to be fight of the year. I'm going I'm to say it right now. Fight of the year. Right now. Because a lot of... This is a fight that nobody wants to take as far as with Benavidez or Andre. You can say what you want as far as resumes or anything. But this is a fight that nobody wants to take. So, with a lot of people trying to um, switch up now and trying to backpedal and they're going to try to juice up everything and Try to make it seem like, uh, oh, they was pro this guy and pro that guy. A lot of people haven't been uh, talking good about Benavidez or Andre, so they don't already want to see a good event anyway. They're going to try to bring up numbers and all kind of other stuff anyways. They're going to try to look for the first guy who lost, try to throw him under the bus and try to discredit him. But this is a huge fight for real boxing fans. Very big fight. I bet Canelo going to be watching. This is going to be a very big fight. But for people to try to downplay Demetrius Andre all these years, and now we get to a point where uh, people see now that he's a threat, that he's to be taken seriously, 36, 37, 34, 35, whatever age he can be, he's going to be a threat. And right now, people see that, like, oh, okay, he hasn't aged out like we thought he was. He ain't going to go away. No, he's not going to go away. The guys that y'all trying to uh, age out, they're the ones who lasted the longest. The ones who uh, try to age guys out, they aging themselves out. So we see now, even even with the stuff that's going on in, in the divisions, the 160s, the 168s, this fight right here going to determine a lot of stuff. It's also going to make Benavidez better anyways uh, for him to even take this fight. But for the guys who have been down to meet Andre all these years, they can't come up. It's, two, it's a few things coming up right now. They can't come up with a reason why he took the fight. They want to come up with a reason like, why would he take a, take this fight? Why would he take this fight? Because at first they want to say, oh, Benavidez, nobody wants to fight Benavidez. But when he picks the fight, nobody's making a big deal out of it. But if Charlo would have been the same person that would have gotten in the ring with Benavidez, you wouldn't have heard the end of it. But with Benavidez now fighting Andre, People see now that, oh, yeah, Andre, he's a threat, man. With this going on, the things that uh, he's doing as far as now, he's going to open up the division to the point where it's going to be just one clear-cut champion throughout the whole division, this whole era. Because what's going on now is Charlos, now we're starting to see who's the best out of the Charlos, out of Benavidez, out of Andre, all these guys that's been fighting over the years, all of it's starting to close in, the wall's closing in. Now we're starting to see who really gonna be uh, the last man standing. And Canelo has to fight these guys. If he doesn't, 
the fight's gonna be so big that fans gonna be asking for it. It's gonna be fight of the year, man. These guys, they punch too much. They throw too many punches. They punch too hard. They've been undefeated for too long. You know what I'm saying? I respect David Benavidez more, and I respect a lot of guys because a lot of guys ain't taking this fight. Not, not like how he's doing. The way he's doing it right now, it's a whole different way where everybody else doing. We had the stories all this year about how Demetrius Andre pulled out of one fight, and now he's this and this and this. And people don't hold Virgil Ortiz over his head that he done pulled out over three, two or three fights in a row. That's how I know, man. Certain guys that be just, just out here talking. These guys, these new fighters have been pulled out of all kind of big event fights. All kind of fights. Pay-per-view fights is coming up. They done pulled out of fights. All kind of stuff. With injuries, last minute. Then you had uh, Andre uh, coming up trying to fight. And you got other guys skipping out on undisputed fights and stuff like that. We're seeing now who's going to really be uh, at the top. All the other talk about who's not at the top and who's this guy and who's that guy and what's his resume like. Now we're starting to see now. People can't really say nothing about Andre after he even took this fight. I don't care what you want to say. I don't care about no results or nothing. You can't really say anything. Charlo just went out there and gave us a zero like everybody said he would. Andre been calling his man out for years. He said a lot of things about him not taking the fight. Now what's coming out now is it's starting to look like Andre is the one who's been telling the truth the whole time. And these other guys haven't been telling the truth. They tried to make it seem like he he didn't want to fight. Like he wasn't a threat. Uh, like they didn't know who he was. Even though he's been in the amateurs. Doing big things for years. They try to make it seem like, well, I don't know who he is. I'm not a matchmaker. And you're going to have to figure this out. And I tried to fight him before, but he pulled out the fight. And he didn't want to do it. Him and his peoples and this and this and that. I bet if it would have been Canelo, he pulled out the fight. I bet you would have still fought Canelo. But we're seeing now that when Jamel used that excuse as far as, oh, he pulled out the fight. He didn't want to fight me. And, oh, he it, it pulled out the fight. We were supposed to fight a long time ago. Come on, man. See now that was a lie. We see now that guys are trying to uh, find fights. I seen when his brother had dropped on Instagram with uh, Andre. I seen then. I said, okay, it's just a business. I see these dudes ain't really trying to do nothing. But Andre very confident. He's very confident right now. He's confident to the point where people are scared. Of, they scared to even talk about it. Cause they got so much. They got years of built up bad reporting on him being a, a, a duck. Now, possibly, you got a guy who's possibly finna wipe out Benavidez, and you talking about he's a duck. Now, if he goes out there and beat Benavidez, all these guys who say he's a duck, they're gonna be invalid. None of that stuff gonna be valid no more. It's already a lot of guys that have tried to destroy Crawford's career. Now you got guys that have tried to take money out of Andre's career, too millions they didn't cost off of this bad reporting so now you got guys like canelo out there like yeah he's a horrible fighter you didn't see what this, this journalist or this youtuber said oh he's ducking people oh he's he's a horrible fighter then everybody just sending it back and forth oh he's horrible he's horrible he's horrible what's going on now though it's a lot of silent doubters out there people ain't gonna be talking like they used to the way these guys were talking two or three years ago, oh, Andre, he needs to go away. He doesn't want to fight anybody. Janovic and this person. You had dudes jumping on the ship for Janovic. Some of these dudes just like to say cool names. I don't know. They just want to sound good and be like, oh, yeah, I know Janovic and Zordo Romero and this person and that person. It sounds so lame because they say all them names and then still get their prediction wrong. Nobody even knows half of the stuff they're talking about. Andre running from Charlo? When? Really? Do you hear, do you hear how crazy that sounds in 2023 now? Especially after that uh, Canelo fight. Do y'all see how crazy that sounds? Demetrius Andre was running from Charlo. Why? He wasn't running from Charlo, man. Come on now. Come on.
If you really look at, if you really, really look at Charlo's resume, the only reason his resume looks good is because you know some names on there. That's the only reason. I've been saying that for years. Y'all don't know nobody. That's why you have upsets in boxing because guys be like, man, I ain't never think that guy will lose. Or I didn't think he'll, just like the Spence fight. I didn't think Spence would fight, lose like that. Man, y'all act like Spence ain't never, never lost a fight before. Come on, man. The man ain't had a knockout in years. The writing was on the wall. Like, y'all ain't see that? But they'll try to tell you, nah, man, uh, stuff different now. I guess he's a car wreck and things like But we use certain excuses for people. But if I say, yeah, Andre has some business problems and he couldn't get to fight with Charlie, oh, well, that's because he didn't want it and he's greedy with money. And I, man, come on, man. You don't even know people in your family who greedy with money. But you know a dude off the street who greedy with money? Come on now. All right, let's stop it. We're going to pick favorites, but picking favorites has gotten people in the wrong driver's seat now. Now you have people trying to jump around and, well, I, I, this is not my favorite fighter no more. You got guys who was pushing for Charlo and Spence for years. Now they look crazy. Built the whole channel off of that. Nobody want to fight Charlo. They can't get a chance and Nobody want to put Charlo on Undisputed. Like, man, get off your knees. Nobody want to put Charlo on Undisputed. I mean, uh, on pound for pound list. This is why. I like Tony Harrison. But anybody else beat Tony Harrison, they ain't going to get put on pound for pound list. And then my thing is this right here. If you was jumping around at 154 and 160, see, I know that I, I seen when those guys was jumping around at 154 and 160. When I seen Charlo trying to make a uh, a mega fight with uh, Jared Hurd, that's when I seen right then. I said, oh, he ain't trying to he ain't trying to make no big fights for real. Cause difference between him and uh, Crawford, and Crawford ain't finna sit around and say, hey, let's make a mega fight and let's try to build this up. Like him and Spence was talking like that. I'm not trying to talk down on Spence. I'm just saying that's that's what was going on. It was oh, uh, let me clear this try the street up real quick, or or uh, talk to Al and this man. Come on, man. But it's coming around now, though. Andre ain't got the fight now. Like he said a long time ago, I've been trying to get on PBC for years. I guess that wasn't in the business plan for him to be over there at PBC. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that can say that. I guess he went in the business plan though. Because as you can see, a lot of these guys been trying to make a fight. I don't think Andre was saying, oh, I don't want to fight Benavidez at 30. Let me fight him at 35, 36. I don't think uh, Crawford said, let me fight Spence at 36, 35. Come on, man. Nobody even said that. Like, why would them guys want to age themselves out and fight some of the biggest punchers, the biggest threats? Like, people don't people can say what they want to say, but Benavidez is the biggest threat uh, at 168. Especially if he's sparring guys like Bivol and all that. Ben, ben sparring Golovkin and these other guys. Yeah, man, he's he's way, way ahead of the curve, especially on a lot of fighters. Like him... Andre fighting him right now is way tougher than fighting Charlo or anybody else. So that's not even a question. Because Charlo, they don't even want to get in the ring with uh, Benavidez. They gave him all kind of, he needs to be this age and this and that. He got to have the shots and all kind of stuff. So Benavidez, he, he's looking for the type of toughest fights right now. You can't do nothing but respect them. But it's a lot of guys silent on Andre, though. I'm starting to notice this. And they're going to they gonna do him like they did Crawford. They're going to hope that he loses. And then when he wins, you're going to see a whole bunch of content come out about him, how he did, and how we want to see him fight Canelo next. Now, you you got guys who ain't never asked to see him in the ring with Canelo. We don't need to see that. He's a horrible fighter. He don't want to fight Charlos anyway. Man, come on, man. I will never doubt a boxer because he didn't fight the Charlos. That would be the worst thing ever. Because 
As you can see, Charlo don't want to fight nobody for real. Nah. Not Andre. If they did, they would have fought him already. I'm pretty sure he ain't the reason they didn't fight. There's a lot of other fights I would have liked the Charlo to fight already if they haven't fought. The Jerry Hurd fight, that was a long time ago. I think that was before anybody had, had a belt. I wanted to see that fight. Uh, right now, people want to see Caleb Plant fight Jamal Charlo. That's not going to happen no time soon, it looks like. He's going to fight Jose Benavidez. So, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. But as you can see right now, the guy who's taking the real tough fights right now is not, is not the guy y'all said that everybody was ducking. We're going to have to retire that word. Because when Spence and Charlo popped up, that ducking word just start flying from all kind of places. Oh, this guy ducking. Man, come on, man. Now we see that word ducking has not been thrown in a while. Well, y'all try to throw it around on Frank Martin, but uh, I already put that information out about that. That's, that's not what's going on. But Andre is definitely a threat. And everybody, uh, silence is definitely showing me right now that they're scared, terrified. They don't know how big of a threat he is against uh, Benavidez. They don't know how good he is. They try to look at the level of competition. They try to say, nah, well, he didn't beat a kind of planet or anything. So, well, we're going to see. We're going to see. Y'all said the same thing about Crawford. We're going to see if that's right, though. Like and subscribe. That's all I got.